In this screencast, I will illustrate a bottle cap in Inkscape version 047. Some time ago, I got the idea for making a bottle cap illustration in Inkscape. After making several styles of bottle caps on my own and never really being satisfied with my results, uh, I hit the net in an attempt to find some very basic techniques to use so that I could screencast it. I eventually landed on a TalkGraphics.com forum post uh, by KT. Uh, here, KT has challenged his uh, or other members to a to illustrate a logo on top of this bottle cap. Uh, he provided the bottle cap uh, design, and then uh, the members just grabbed it and made their own little logo. I thought that would be uh, a great little idea for a screencast and I do like the way that he has um, he has illustrated this bottle cap and it looks simple enough that I can duplicate that in Inkscape so uh, I'm gonna give it a go so thank you very much Heite uh, you get all the credit for this one um, also I want to give a big thanks to uh, Scott Kirkwood uh, for taking Daniel Taylor's key status monitor to a whole new level um, he has fixed the mouse status and added many other nice improvements. Um, Scott has done an outstanding job so far and keeps adding features uh, faster than I can keep up. Um, so if you want to grab this uh, a key status monitor, um, make sure that you go to uh, Google Code, you type in Keymon, and uh, you see from his screenshots here, uh, you can make this thing uh, any size you want now. Uh, he's got an Apple theme that was added. Um, you can make your own theme, I guess, uh, but uh, uh, just check it out. This is uh, Daniel Taylor uh, has always done a great job with the key status monitor, but um, it has just, you know, had problems for uh, every new release of Ubuntu that I've been using, and uh, Scott has pretty much taken it and uh, just made it a whole whole bunch better. So uh, again. Uh, Head over to uh, Google Code Keymon and grab that. I see that he's just made a, a Debian package for it. Um, so big, big thanks, Scott. Uh, you're brilliant, and uh, keep up the great work. So let's get started. Uh, bottle cap. Uh, before we get started, I just want to make sure that uh, you have your document set up for uh, 640 by 480. And I also want to make sure that my Inkscape preferences, uh, my inset outset is set to one, and my rotational snaps is set to one degree. Now that's uh, that's pretty tight usually. Uh, normally I have this thing set to uh, 10 or 15, but I want to make sure that I have a little uh, tighter uh, snapping, so I've got that set to one. Uh, th again, that's just personal preference. Uh, so let's get started with our first shape. Uh, we're going to grab this uh, Create Stars and Polygon tool. I'm going to be on the star option. I want 20 for corners. Uh, spoke ratio, probably going to put in a uh, 0.95. Uh, for rounded, we're going to put in a 0.75. Whoops. And for randomized, we're going to leave that zero. Okay, now when I do that, if I hold my control key down, I get a nice little shape that looks like this. Okay. And what that gives me is a nice kind of a bottle cap looking shape um, that we can play with here. Um, it gives me a nice little rounded inset. Uh, these spokes are rounded on the outside. And that does the burn of the work for us, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and true this up a little bit. I'm going to make this uh, 400. And I'm going to center that on my page. Okay, and we'll give this a kind of a dark gray or a light gray look here. And what I want to do now is uh, right-click on this object. Left-click, right-click, duplicate. I'm going to make this one white. Uh, it's hard to see, but I'm going to double click on this. You're going to see these two nodes here. Uh, what I'm going to do is turn off my rounded up here. And holding my control key down, I'm going to take this node and just pull it inward. Now the reason I have my control key down, if you let go of it, you'll kind of get this thing to spin around like it's a James Bond looking thing. Uh, we hold the control key down to constrain it so it comes in straight. Okay. 
And we'll drop it off. And I see I've got a spoke ratio of 0.4. I'm going to make this a 0.5. And I'm going to right click on the gray uh, object in the background and we're going to duplicate that. I am going to make it a, let's just make it red so we can see it. I'm going to double click on it and we are going to turn the rounded back down to zero. And again, I'm going to hold my control key and I'm just going to snap this to a particular size here. Let's make this a 0.8. And I'm going to rotate that, and I want to rotate it so that the, the point of these spokes is right in the middle of this uh, groove here. So I'm going to hold my control key down and just slide it around. That probably looks pretty good. Okay, now what I want to do is right click on this gray object. Actually, this might be easier if I take the red version, move it over right click on our gray actually left click right click to duplicate okay now what I'm gonna do is right click on this and select both of them and I am going to do a last selected and put them right on top of each other so I get something that looks like that okay now what I'm gonna do is select both objects we're gonna go to path object to path to convert them to a path then what I'm going to do is a division. Now when I do that, the uh, gray object will um, disappear, and what the gray object touched on the red will now divide that. So you see that I have these little squares selected around here. So they're individual objects, so what I'm going to do is delete them all the way around until I get a shape that looks like this. So we've just pretty much cut off the tips. Okay, so I'm going to put this back on top. Actually, let's leave it off just for now, and let's take this one and move it off to the side. And let's work on our gradient first. So what I'm going to do is highlight this gray object. We're going to go to our gradient tool. Uh, I want a liter linear gradient, and I want to make sure that I'm doing a gradient on the fill. So I'm just going to double click this. We'll select this uh, blue object here, or this handle. We'll make it just a little bit darker on that end. We'll make this one just a little bit lighter. There we go. Whoops. And I'm going to take that and move it here. Move this one here. And I want this just a little bit lighter yet. There we go. So we get a nice little shuttle, or I'm sorry, a subtle uh, gradient effect here. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to give this white star a gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back on top of my page. I find it easy if you're doing a lot of centering um, to work right in the middle of your page, uh, especially if you're doing you know objects right on top of each other, then you can just use the uh, relative to page option and then just center horizontally and vertically. Okay now for this one I want to give it a gradient as well so I'm going to double click on this and we'll move that handle all the way up to this spoke and we'll move it down to this spoke here and I want to make sure that I go just a little bit past so the spoke just kind of fades out just a little bit. All right. Now what I want to do is give this a gradient, so we'll make it gray to start with. And I'll make it kind of dark here, and we'll put that right on top of the other objects. We get something that looks like this. Okay. Again, I'm going to go to my gradient tool and double click. I want that to be kind of dark here. This one here, I want it to be darker yet. And it's a little too dark at first, but I want to get this thing right before I change the colors. Something that looks just about like this. Okay, now what I can do is change this just a little bit. Down here we'll go just a little bit lighter. And I'll go ahead and edit the gradient. There we 
we go. And for the top, we're going to go just a little bit lighter. We get something that looks just about like that. Okay, now some of these gradients might be a little harder to see uh, on your screen during my screencast, um, but they are there and, and they're very subtle. Uh, I'm going to take this, I'm going to highlight the white star in the background, and we're going to give this just a little bit of a blur. Uh, let's try uh, like a 0.8. There we go. And that's just kind of kind of simulate the... Uh, the shading effect or the lighting that comes off uh, the pointed uh, spoke that goes around this bottle cap. Okay, all right. So those are my uh, three star shapes. So next thing I'm going to do is draw a circle. We'll make this red so we can see it. And again, we're going to center that up right in the middle of our page, right on top of everything else. And I'm going to hold my shift and my control key down, and I'm going to slide this up about into here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to highlight the red. Uh, that probably looks pretty good. I want it a little bit lighter right there. And what I'm going to do now is left click on this circle, right click and duplicate, and I'm going to slide this down. It's hard to see, it disappears, but we're going to add a white stroke to it. I'll just right click on the stroke. We'll go white. And we'll give this. Let's give this about a 16. And I want to make sure that I turn the fill off on the inside. Okay, so we do that by hitting this uh, none square here. You can see that it turns off my fill. And we'll make this just a little bit bigger. There we go. And I want to make this stroke, um, let's make it a 19 instead of a 16. So we'll make it just a little bit thicker. And we're going to give this stroke a gradient. Okay, so what I want to do is select my gradient tool, and I'm going to select my uh, gradient stroke option here. Double click this. And for this one here, we're going to make it kind of dark. And we'll move this one up here. Okay, so all of our lighting is coming from this uh, top left corner here, pointing downward. Okay, and that's probably pretty good. Now I'm going to take that and give it a little bit of a blur. So we go to our color tool here, our fill and stroke dialog, I mean. And I'm going to give this about a 2 for a blur. And we're going to take that now, holding my control and my shift key down at the same time, I'm going to bring it up just a little bit, okay? About like that. So we see just a little bit of that gray uh, underneath circle here come through, okay? And that kind of simulates that rounded shape, that bottle cap shape. Let me get a sip of coffee here. Okay? So that's exactly what we want to see. Okay, so that's pretty much our bottle cap. So really, it only took, what, four, let's see, five objects to make that bottle cap shape. So now, let's make a really, really super simple logo to put on top of it. And I'm not going to dwell and do anything great. Um, I just want to add some text to it, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on this uh, circle underneath and duplicate it. And let's make it kind of a burnt orange looking color, a little bit lighter. Okay, and I'm going to take that and let's drill it down just a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. And let's make sure that our, our stroke here, our shading around here, is on top. So I'm going to move that on top. And that gives us just a little bit of over light. A uh, little shadowing here. All right, now that I have that, um, let's give that a little bit of a gradient. So we're going to pick our gradient tool, fill, and I'm going to use a radial gradient. So I'm going to double click on this, and I'm going to do a shift R to reverse it. And we'll make this a little bit lighter on the inside, about something like that. 
Okay. Now what I want to do is um, right click on this uh, orange circle and we're going to duplicate it and I'm going to bring this in. I am going to make a white stroke and I'm going to turn off the fill. All right. Now what I'm going to do is take this and move it up just a little bit. About like that. If we don't get it right, it doesn't matter. And I got an object over here, so let's go ahead and delete that, whatever that is. Um, all right, so let's add some text. Let's move this uh, bottle cap off to the side and let's add some text. And let's call this, let's say, uh, maybe I want to put smooth taste on this thing. And let's find something a little bit better than the bitstream. Let's uh, let's try miso or miso. I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. We'll go ahead and apply that. And let's make that. It's a little small. Let's make that about a. Uh, let's try a 36. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Smooth taste. Okay, let's go ahead and right click on that and duplicate. We'll move one down. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's let's do a 12 fluid ounces. Something about like that. Okay, and let's take our text and we're going to put our text around this circle here, this white stroke. Okay, so I'm going to take that stroke and we're going to convert it to a path first. And next, I am going to click my text and we're going to put text on a path. Okay, now that's not where I want my text. I want my text to be up here. So what we're going to do is just click on the circle alone. I'm going to hold my control key down and we're going to spin this thing around. And when I do that, that actually spins the text along with it. Okay, and I'm just kind of eyeing this around here. I want to get this straight. And I'll just pull down a guide to help me. And I think that looks pretty good. It's close enough. Okay, so what I'll do is just delete that guide. And the next thing I want to do is right click on this uh, white circle. And we're going to duplicate this. And there goes my telephone. Okay, and. Next, we're going to take this 12 fluid ounces and put that on the white circle. Okay, so I'm going to select this. We'll select this circle here. And we'll put that on a path. And that's not exactly where I want it either. So what I'm going to do is take this white circle, hold my control key down, move it around. And now I want that text to be on the inside of the circle. So I'm going to take this white circle here and we're going to flip it. Okay, when I do that, it moves to the inside. That's exactly what I want. But I want that text to be down here. So what I'm going to do is take this circle, and we're going to move this around until I get it about right where I want it. I think that looks pretty good. And I want to make sure that that text is on the same uh, outside, or I guess the same uh, diameter as this smooth taste text. Okay, in order to do that, we just take our circle and we scale it up. And I scale that text about the top of my smooth taste there. I think that gets pretty close. And we are going to true up this 12 fluid ounces a little bit. I'll go ahead and zoom in on this. I think that looks pretty good actually. It's centered. Okay. So we'll go ahead and leave that. We'll go ahead and delete that. And let's zoom back out. Now, if I were to, to delete these circles, it's going to delete my uh, text uh, on that path. So I just want to make sure that I take both of these white circles and we're going to move it all the way down to the bottom. 
So what I get left is this smooth taste on top, 12 fluid ounces on the bottom. Okay, that's the effect that I'm trying to go for. So let's go ahead and change this text to white. All right, I think that looks pretty good so far. And the next thing that I want to do is add some type of a uh, logo in here, or, or I'm not a logo, I guess. Uh, we're going to add some more text. So uh, I'm going to left click on the orange circle, right click, and duplicate. We're going to drill this down just a little bit. And I want a white stroke. I want to remove the fill. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's see, what do we want to add? Uh, let's add some new text and let's call this um, orange soda. Let's go ahead and center that up. And I want to change that text. So let's find something that looks pretty decent. I think I want to use uh, Samster. And I probably want to go 100% on the spacing. Let's close that and see what we got here. Orange soda. I think that looks pretty good. So let's zoom in just a little bit on this so we can see it. And we'll go ahead and center that up on our page for now. And I'm going to hold the control shift down and I'm going to drill that in just a little bit. About like that. And again, I'm just going to make sure that I got that centered. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Orange soda. So let's go ahead and uh, right click on that and duplicate. And what I'm going to do next is slide this off to the side. And we'll make this one white. And we'll keep this one black. And I am going to take this and we're going to convert it to a path. And then um, in the new Inkscape, I have to take that immediately and do a combine. Okay, That combines it in one pass. So when I double click on it, you get all these nodes, whereas if I don't combine, you get individual shapes in here. And I, I kind of like that feature in case you want to break up your text. So uh, just combining it is just one more step, but it's not really a big deal. So, Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, outset that a little bit. So I think we go to Path, Outset, and let's do that. Um, let's do it one more time and see what it does. And let's go ahead and center that up on our page here. And let's lower that a step. Come on. Maybe we'll do it out here. Make that on top. We'll select both of these. I'll, I will do a last selected. There we go. Now I'm going to take that white version and I'm going to bump it up so it looks like that. It kind of looks like I've got an extrusion there. And let's take that for now and group it. And let's go ahead and center that up on our bottle cap. Whoops, I'm going to do page. Okay, and we get something that looks like this. All right, I think we're getting close. Um, now what I want to do is add a uh, kind of like that Pilsner underscore or underline. So we're going to grab our Bezier tool, and I'm going to draw right here, and I'll just hold my Control key down and go straight up like that. And I'll come out here like this. And we'll go ahead and close that. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in on this so we can see what we're doing. 
And I'm going to highlight this path. And I want to add a node in between here. So we'll do that there. And I'm going to hold my shift key down and grab this one. And we will add a node here. And actually, we could have done this differently. Let's go ahead and add one in the middle here. Okay, now we didn't have to do that all individually. I could have just selected the whole thing and just hit this thing once, and it'll put a node in between. But Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, left-click this first one, hold my Shift key down, grab that one, and grab this third one here, and we are going to do a Make Selected Nodes Auto Smooth. Now when I do that, I can grab this and just kind of bump that a little bit. Make it just a little bit rounded. We don't want to go overboard here. And looks like I did go overboard there. Move this back out a little bit. Okay, and I kind of get that underlying shape. So now what I want to do is take that and we'll make that white and I'll turn the stroke off. And I'm going to duplicate this make that version black and I'm gonna outset that and I do that by going to path outset path outset and we'll go one more time outset okay now let's zoom back out And we'll move this one out here, this one out here. I'll move that on top. I'll select the white, the black. We'll go to our Align and Distribute tool. I'll do Last Selected. And we'll center that up. Okay, now what I want to do is take the white and we'll push it up one time. Okay, that'll give me something about like that. And I'm going to take that. I'm going to have to fix this just a little bit. Okay, now let's zoom in on this side here, and let's go ahead and fix this. Okay. And that probably looks good enough. Again, those are things that you can tweak on your own. And we'll go ahead and make that a group. And I'll throw that here. And just ever so slightly, I am going to rotate it. So we get something that looks like that. And I want to make sure that I have that centered uh, horizontally. Whoops. Let's pick page here. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and take that and just scale it. Just a nudge. And we'll get this over here just a little bit. Okay. I think that looks pretty good there. So, let's take both of these things and group those so that's one big shape and let's go ahead and put that in the center and we're gonna scale it down just a little bit try it again and we'll push it over to the left okay so there's our orange soda logo so let's go ahead and add uh, a couple more things. Um, let's add uh, orange soda. We don't have a company name, so let's just make something up. Um, 
Um, let's do, uh, let's say, how about St. Mark's. And let's find our hit J to get to the J's. And I landed right on the font that I want to use. So let's go ahead and apply that. Let's see what that looks like. It's a little bit bigger. I think that looks pretty good. And we'll make that white. And I'm going to right click and duplicate that. And we'll slide this down. And we'll make up some other stuff here. Let's do. Uh, do establish 1972. Okay, and I'm just throwing, kind of throwing some stuff on here randomly, so uh, maybe this doesn't look quite right, but be good enough for the screencast, I guess. Okay, so we got St. Mark's Orange Soda Established 1972. I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and take this. We'll see if we can rotate everything. Um, this. Get just off to the side here. Okay, I think that's starting to look decent. And finally, um, let's give this just a little bit of uh, shading around here um, so we can do that with our, um, let's see, what do we want to use? Let's use just regular Bezier. Okay, and I want this to kind of be a little rough right there. So I kind of want an abnormal lighting effect. Okay, and that's just going to give us just a little bit of a shading around here. Go ahead and rotate that a bit. About like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take this orange and we're going to duplicate that. So we've got an orange copy. I'll just make that uh, magenta so we can see it. And I want to take this bit here. We'll make it white. I'll remove the stroke. And I'm going to highlight both. We will do a, let's try an intersection. Yep. I pretty much got it. Okay, we're going to make that white now. And what I'm going to do is we're going to take that. We're going to do a dynamic offset. We're going to pull it in about right there. We're going to convert that to a path. And then we are going to do a dynamic offset again. And we're going to pull that out. Oh, right there. And uh, that gives us these uh, fillets or these radius 
uh, our radii around here. That's a trick that I learned from Richard. Okay, and we'll take that and we're going to give that a linear gradient. want to light this up too much. Just give it just a little bit of glare. We want to see our smooth taste in the back there. Okay. All right. Now, I think we're getting close. Uh, to finishing this. Um, I did notice that on bottle caps, everything, uh, as far as the graphics on this, uh, everything is nice and strong and bold, uh, crisp, I guess. Um, <coughs> excuse me. If, if you want to take your uh, certain elements and give it just a little bit of a blur, it kind of makes it just a little bit more realistic. Um, let's try a, a one. And what it does on this particular text here, it really kind of dirties it up. And I kind of like that. Maybe 1 is a little bit too much. Let's try uh, 0.8. And let's try a 0.8 on this. Uh, that's a little too much there. We'll try a 0.5. Okay. Now, we zoom in on this just a little bit, and you can see how it just kind of dirties that up or just, you know, kind of rasterizes the edges a little bit, and that's kind of a neat little effect, and uh, I'm not sure if that effect, uh, if you could get that kind of that dirty effect in uh, release 046, but in 47 it does that, and uh, I thought it was kind of a, a neat little trick. So uh, let's see, let's back out and see where we are. Um, I think that's our bottle cap. Um, again, these are uh, these are kind of great for logo or uh, yeah, lo or uh, icons. I'm sorry, and you can put all kinds of little uh, logos on there. Um, I've seen people you uh, make these things into RSS icons, a bunch of different things. Um, if you want something a little bit more realistic, you can put like maybe like a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi logo. Uh, you can change the color. Uh, these grays that I've put around here, that's kind of a stock sheet metal look. Um, but you can make that, you know, uh, give it kind of a brass color um, or whatever color you want to choose. So that is our bottle cap screencast. So thank you for watching. I'm Heathen X.